Okay, uh, I can't see my, my, my mouse here, but I think we'll do. We'll just make do with this. So, hello everyone. Um, hi, my name is Ruben, and today I will be talking about and sharing with you about zero to 1,000 money business. And basically, these are the things that we're going to be going through today, okay? So, what I'll cover today is basically to <clears throat> find out if your product is profitable. So, I believe most of you here are business owners and also someone probably you're interested to running a business, right? And we're also going to look at validating a product. And we're going to do this practically. There's going to be not the slides, but I'm going to do some stuff practically together with you today. Uh, building a marketing strategy isn't really hard at all. I think most business owners, they, you know, they, 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 they complicate it instead of making it simple. So we're going to build one and hopefully you'll be able to follow this and also build it for your own business as well. I'm going to be running a case study where I'll be building a 1000 business from scratch. All right. Okay. So um, <clears throat> again, thank you for joining me today. I hope most of you are safe on the floods in Malaysia. Yeah. My name is Ruben. Uh, quick introduction about me and then we'll go back to you. Okay. So my name is Ruben. I'm a head of marketing elite and I teach business owners marketing and marketing is huge. So normally what I do is I teach digital marketing. And when we talk about digital marketing, it covers mostly the digital parts of marketing right um <clears throat> i also help businesses grow so that's where i you know offer some services in terms of consultations for uh, smes startups and more to help them grow in terms of revenue and also more of their audiences and customers um, i started off my career as a musician so some of you uh, who is in penang maybe you might know me as a musician once I, I still play music these days, uh, but then I spend most of my time more on marketing now, right? So I'm a co-founder of music school in Penang. Uh, you can Google that, you can find out about me if you want to. I'm a former music producer where I'll be working on music full time. Mm -hmm. But right now, these days, I normally spend more time doing marketing and helping businesses grow, right? And if you'd like to learn more about you know, what I do, <clears throat> some of my thoughts, I write quite occasionally on my own blog, rubenjung.com. All right, so that's, that's a quick introduction about myself. Now, I just want to know a quick, uh, get a quick sentiment from all of you here today. Yeah? So there's a couple of us here today. Um, tell me or tell us basically everyone here using the chat, what do you do? What kind of business do you run? I, have, I put down here a few samples for you. I run a cafe, I help businesses with their accounting and taxes. I run a gym in Johor. You can go and use any of these scripts. Go ahead, put them down inside the chat. Let's hear from everyone. But if you feel maybe half a minute to do that, you might never know who you might meet here, who you might connect with here, okay? So go ahead, don't be shy, put it in the chat, let's see. All right, so I see one response here. So from Grayson, Grayson helps businesses with their digital marketing. Great, you're someone like me, we help people with digital marketing, that's great. Who else you have here? Oh, <laughs> another digital marketer. So Cash helps businesses with digital marketing. Hmm. Great, another fellow marketer. So we've lots of marketers here today. Tourism industry. So risk is in the tourism industry. Um, I, I believe the tourism industry is opening up again, yeah? And you must you must be quite busy this month, I believe, Riz. Justin, hey, how are you? Uh, he helped businesses with to generate leads. All right, come on, come on. Put in your responses here. Don't be shy. I want to see who you are here. Get to know you better. Okay, so we have Jimmy with logistics, we have Mizan with uh, I help businesses have a good website. Daniel, <clears throat> help businesses own a create video marketing. Daniel, is, are, are you the Daniel I know from Penang? Regine, marketer from property developer, wish to be a corporate, to quit the corporate world to start up your own business. Um, oh, you're different Daniel, huh? Okay, <laughs> no problem. Okay, so Regine is from the corporate world. Uh, yeah, from the corporate world, looking to go into property. Uh, a marketer, sorry, a marketer from property developer wish to quit the corporate world to start their own business. Yeah, sorry for that. What kind of business do you want to start? Hmm. Okay, so thank you for your answers. You can continue to chat, yeah? So um, <clears throat> the way I normally like to do these sessions is I like to talk to you. So um, that's how I normally run. Okay, so let me just quit this chat here because my screen is like frozen up for some reason. Okay, so let's go into reasons why new businesses normally fail. Okay, so most of you here are business owners or going into business. And 
Today's session is going to be a little bit, uh, I won't call it beginner, but more the fundamentals of building a business. And I'm going to show you some practical uh, skill sets on doing that. Okay. So first of all, before you run a business, or if you are already in a business, you have to understand why most new businesses fail. And of course, there are a lot of different reasons, right? There's like hundreds over reasons of why businesses fail from no funding, from blah, 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 right? But here are some very popular reasons or top reasons why new businesses fail. So number one, most businesses never validate their product. Now I say product, but the product can also be a service, right? So maybe you offer digital marketing service and, uh, and that's, that's a service. You know? um, <clears throat> and a lot of people don't actually validate their product or service enough. And, and that's why their business fail spend too much time on non-revenue producing activities. Now, this is something that I share a lot. And I believe if you are a one-man show kind of business, you also fall into this trap a lot. So what I mean by non-revenue producing activities is when you work on things that don't move the needle for your business. For example, you spend the whole of Tuesday and Wednesday building your website, changing the CSS, changing the color, changing this and that. Or you spend tomorrow to figure out a logo to use for your website, your name card. Uh, maybe you spend Friday to, to read up on Business Insider, on NFTs, on, on whatever these things is. And you don't need to spend time working on your business, right? So this is what I call non-revenue producing activities. And a lot of business owners, especially when you're small, they spend too much time you know, building these kind of things, working on these kind of things. And the reason why they spend so much time working on all these non-revenue producing activities building websites and just putting up blogs is because they fear rejection, right? It's as simple as that. Um, so they avoid getting rejected by being busy working on something else. This is one of the reasons why a lot of new businesses fail. Okay. So if you find yourself doing that, then it's like a click, 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 wake up call. Uh, number four, right? They never reach their intended target audience. So a lot of people, well, when you set up a business, you're actually in the business of helping people and moving to um, changing people, right? But a lot of business, they never actually really figure out who the target audience is. They follow the normal general way of marketing where everyone says, okay, go reach out to as many people as possible, build a funnel and then see who becomes customers, right? So they, they reach out to the masses and they see what sticks. So these are a few reasons why new businesses fail. And I hope you don't actually make these mistakes. Even if you do, uh, you want to actually avoid doing that. Okay, let me just look at the chats. <clears throat> All right, so Regine enjoys baking, especially sourdough. I love sourdough. Uh, I'm in PJ, and one of my favorite sourdough places is Wow Yeast. I will type this down for you. Amazing place. Okay, so anyway, <clears throat> let's continue here. Yeah? So I cannot see the chat when I enlarge my screen for some reason. I'm using a new MacBook, so it's a bit funny here. Okay, so now. In order to identify if your businesses, if your business is something that is worth doing, whether it's a product or service, I know I put it as product, but we have to look at product or service. Okay. So does your product solve a painful problem? Now, this is the concept of the totem pole. So with the totem pole, um, of course, the bottom of the totem pole is not important. And if you want to be important, you want to be on top of the totem pole. So if you look at this totem pole concept here, right? I want you to figure out if your product or service is in the bottom of the totem pole or in the top of the totem pole or maybe in the middle, okay? Now I'm going to give you a few examples and I'm going to ask you a few questions. So a few examples for you. Now, Dyson, you know that Dyson came out with this hair dryer thing that does not use heat but use air to do it, vacuum, or I don't know what it's called. So. I believe something like that Dyson product is more towards novelty. Novelty, yeah. It's not so much of a practical means of you know, drying hair, and so I would rate it somewhere between the mid to bottom of the totem pole. It's not very important. It does not really solve a very painful problem, right? Give you more examples. Um, <clears throat> keychains. Keychains, yeah. It, it solves problems. It solves problems where you want to lock your key together. But then we have this couple keychains. Does it solve a painful problem? No. So it's going to be much harder to market or sell such products. And therefore, we put these products at the bottom of the totem pole, right? Now, what are some products or services that are top of the totem pole? Here are some few examples. If you use Grammarly, uh, we have a lot of marketers here with us today, right? And when you write copywriting, when you write social media posts, when you write your emails, you probably have this thing called Grammarly installed on your browser. 
Now, can you imagine life without Grammarly? After using it for a while, probably not. So I think Grammarly is, a, is an app that solves a lot of problems and that's why it's quite high on the totem pole. Another example, right? Um, shaving creams. I was just shaving in, a, in the morning. I'm thinking like, what would I do without shaving creams, right? So shaving cream is, is something so small, but yet it solves a huge problem in the world. Don't you think so? I mean, especially if you're a man, if you have a lot of hair, facial hair on that, right? It solves a big problem. I, I need shaving cream. I cannot live without it, right? And based on what I've shown you, right? Think about your own business, your own products and services, and figure out where does your product lie on, on top of the totem pole or on the bottom of the totem pole? What do you think? Can you, can you share? Let me see who's going to share in the chat section. Is the product in the top or bottom? It's okay. I mean, if, if it's... If you think it's on the bottom, it's fine. If you think it's on the top, it's fine. We're here to learn, okay? <laughs> Sounds like the bottom, Grayson. Oh, why is it in the bottom? <laughs> Grayson, you help you help people do digital marketing, right? You help them solve a big problem, right? And every business today needs marketing, right? You are probably on the top of the totem pole. <laughs> okay, cash is more on the top, that's great. Still new to digital marketing. Fine. It's, it's fine, yeah? Whether you're new, intermediate, or expert, that's great. Marketing is always a moving target. Um, we are clothing wholesaler. Okay. <laughs> Chinon, ev everything top already fulfilled easily. Are you sure? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So I hope I got you to think a little bit, yeah? Think a little bit about your products or services. You want to be on the top, all right? Because sometimes when you're, when you're a marketer, yeah, me as a marketer, I help businesses with marketing, right? And of course, I have my fair share of working with businesses with products that are on the bottom of the pole. So what's going to happen is it's going to be really, really hard to market this sort of products or services no matter what you do, right? No matter what you do, no matter how you market, how brilliant you are, if the product sucks, nobody wants it, it doesn't solve a payment problem, it's going to be very hard to sell. So sometimes it's not the marketer's fault, it's not your fault, it's the product that you're looking to sell. So if you've been doing marketing, if you're trying to you know, push out something, but then somehow you cannot push it, nobody wants to buy it, it's, it's probably in the bottom of the total point to be real with yourself, okay? So I'm glad to see a lot of you are in the top of the totem pole. So that's great, okay? I'm gonna move on here. So this is an example for product I saw. <laughs> which, what do you think? Is this in the bottom or the top of the totem pole? It's called a banana protector. Mohan says in the middle. Okay, that's interesting. Bottom. Okay, Rizan says in the bottom. It's called a banana protector. Yeah, I'm curious. Any of you actually use the product before? bottom okay <laughs> never okay so cash that's a great answer depends on marketing and branding right but it really depends on who it is for right now to me if it's to me it's on my bottom right i don't buy such product i, I think it's a silly product to buy um, banana comes in all shape and sizes so i might have a banana that might not fit in that case here and yet <laughs> this is an actual product, yeah? If you go to Shopee, if you go to Lazada, you should can able to find this product. It's like, what, three ringgit, four ringgit for one piece of plastic protective banana gut thingy. Um, and it's amazing, right? So, I don't know, this exercise here will get you to figure out, yeah? Uh, are, you, are your products in the bottom or your products in the, in the top of the totem pole? Yeah, and catch me is a very good point. It depends on who it is for. So the idea here is all of us as business owners, yeah, we actually make something, right? It could be a product, it could be a service, but we make something. And that make, what we make is what we provide to people, okay? And what we provide to people is basically, you know, what happens is they experience a positive change as a result of what we make, right? Whether that's a product, whether that's a service, whether that's, you know, whatever you do in, the, in business, okay? The truth is, people don't buy what you sell, they buy the results you give them, all right? So I wouldn't buy a banana protector case 
I would buy the result it gives me. So maybe I'm in the market and I need something that I can protect my banana. That sounds wrong. I can protect my banana for the next four days when I'm traveling or something. Then yeah, maybe a banana protector will be, will be important for me. Yeah. But here's the important thing that you have to remember as a business owner. People don't buy what we sell. People buy the results it gives them. All right. So let me give you a quick example of this. Okay. So let's just say you sell drills. Okay. You sell drills today. So all you here today are drill um, businesses. You sell drill or a hardware store. You sell drills. Now, who's your customer? Can you can you help me here? Who would be your ideal customer? Can you share them in the chat? Let's just say you sell drills. Let me see the chat. You sell drills. So who's your customer if you sell drills? <clears throat> okay, so construction workers, supervisors, how would you reach them? Let's just say with digital marketing, right? How would you reach them with digital marketing? You sell drills and you're interested to use digital marketing, whatever strategy to reach them. How would you reach them? Okay, so Regine would move to work with authorized dealers. That's smart because you go for the big queue. Yeah? You go for a dealer that can reach out to a lot of customers. Now, people just about to move to a new house, right? Oh, okay, okay. That's yeah. <clears throat> okay, that's. What else? Who else is a customer? Newly wet men. Okay. Very interesting. All right, all right, all right. So you sell drills. Uh, those who like the DIY, that's also good, yeah? So now those are great answers, right? Um, newly wet men, dads, those who likes to DIY, um, you know, all, all these people they mentioned, they're, they're correct, right? So if you were to use digital marketing, how would you reach these people? So you know your target audience, right? But how would you reach them? So if you look into places like Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, whichever, what they will advise you is to, <clears throat> is to, you know, target them by demographics. So demographics are things like, you know, newly bred men. So we target based on their relationship, married, we target them by age, we target them by maybe their interests, yeah, like like Jin on the set, watching home renovation videos and repair videos, right? And those are basically demographics, right? But yet, yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, these are things that we will do, right? We look at age, gender, education background, purchasing power, social class, uh, location, consumption habits, behavior. Those are things that we have been taught to reach. Um, and yet, right, someone like me, someone who teaches marketing actually buys a drill. So none of you have mentioned Ruben in that chat, but why do I buy a drill? <laughs> All right. So anyway, I bought a drill and why would I want a drill for? Now I want a drill, not because I, I have interest in home renovation videos. <laughs> uh, I don't have interest in repairing. No. Right. So. I'm not a target audience in your definition, but yet I still buy a drill. So what's going on? Now I bought a drill, not because I like the drill, not because I like how the drill is, or because I have interest in repairing or interest in you know, putting, doing home renovation, but because I want to put wall, holes on the wall and put a mirror, right? So a lot for marketing ad video, maybe I'll do that. Yeah, I should actually take a video on this one. So a lot of people, marketers and business owners, they, they reach out to people a little bit wrongly. So this is what I mean in the mistake earlier, yeah? When I mentioned that uh, a lot of people are not reaching their target audience. They're not reaching their target customer correctly, right? Because we have been taught to reach people based on demographics, right? So here's a little paragraph from uh, Seth Godin's This is Marketing Book, right? So. Instead of reaching out to people based on demographics, we want to go for psychographics, right? We want to choose people based on what they dream, what they believe, what they want, yeah? And you know, what they look like. And that's psychographics instead of demographics. So let me quickly explain the difference between demographics and psychographics, okay? And I'm going to give you a quick little thing to think about, and this will help you 
identify your target audience so much better. Okay, so demographics is something that we all have been taught. Yeah, demographics is what we see outside of someone. Where do they live? What is their occupation? What is their interest? What they watch? What they see? What they talk about? How old they are? You know, and all this stuff. That's demographics, and all this data can be, um, you know, targeted on using platforms like Facebook ads, Google ads, whichever ads you can do that within the next half an hour. Nobody has to teach you how to do it. You can follow through the platform. It's so easy. Okay. Now, the harder thing is look at psychographics. So psychographics is basically what people are thinking inside, right? So how would you know what I'm fear? Like me, Ruben, yeah? what do I fear? Or what do I look up to? What is my biggest pain? You will never know that from looking at demographics. Uh, what is my values? What is my aspirations? What is that thing that I want to do? What is one of one that's something that I want to achieve? Right? You'll never be able to find that from using platforms like Facebook ads or any digital marketing tactics. You'll never be able to find that. But then people buy things based on psychographics, not on demographics. Okay? So that's something that I want to share with you. Um, so these are three psychographic questions to ask to identify uh, your customers or your prospects. All right. I've broken it down into three triggers, pain and goals. All right. So think about what may your customers say, I want to make progress in my life right now. Okay. And why now? And what's the pain that they're feeling? What pain is stopping them from making progress? All right. What is stopping them? And does your product or service help solve that problem? And number three, what progress do they want to make? What functional, social, or emotional goal do they want to reach? Now, I'll show you uh, an example of these three psychographic questions based on why I bought a drill in the first place. Okay, so we have triggers, pain, and goals, right? Remember that. So, my trigger is well, I moved to a new house or something like that, and I need to hang mirrors, right? My wife needs to see the mirrors in the bathroom, whatever, right? That's the trigger that triggers me to think about oh, I need a drill, I need a hole in the wall. Now, the pain is I don't want to spend on contractors again. I spent a bomb on renovating the house or whatever, right? And I don't want to spend any more on contractors. Okay, that's my pain. And my goal is to basically put up mirrors on the wall and maybe impress my wife, right? That I can do it too. I don't have to spend extra money. Okay, so that is the trigger, pain, and goal. So your task, your task today, right, is to think about the trigger, pain, and goals of your ideal customer. So if you sell digital marketing services, what will trigger your, the, the companies that you're approaching to think that, ah, we need marketing right now? What is the pain? So let's just say you're doing marketing for, let's say, uh, a property agent group, right? A property company. What is the trigger? Oh, um, New Year is coming. People are going to buy houses. Maybe that's a trigger, all right? What's the pain? The past campaign we ran, we didn't get many leads. We didn't get many customers to want to buy a house, right? What's the goal? We want to have 100 new home buyers, okay? And where does your product or solution fit inside that trigger, pain, and goal? So when we identify the trigger, pain, and goal of our prospects, our customers, it becomes so much easier to think about who you want to reach. And that's how you identify someone's psychographics. Not so much on, oh, I want to target someone who is 40 years old, who lives in Subang, who lives in uh, whatever, right? Because that's not going to be accurate. Uh, and that's, that leads to the, to the problem of reaching the wrong target audience for business. All right? I hope, I hope that makes sense. I think I have not explained it as, as, as well as I wanted to, but I hope that makes sense. Okay, so... Let's go in and build a marketing strategy. Now, building a marketing strategy is simple. Yeah, it's not really hard at all. Um, let me just break it down for you. So to build a marketing strategy, it all comes down to um, these four questions here, right? What do you make? Who is your customer? Where are they? And how do you reach them? So earlier I asked you, what do you do, right? So some, most of you said you are digital marketers. Some of you said you work in logistics. Some of you you are a marketer in a property group. And that's what you make, right? You probably make a product or service or something for someone, okay? Now, you then identify who your customer is. And I told you to switch it from demographics into psychographics. That means we don't target people based on how old they are, where they live, how much they make, but we target them with what are the pain problems that they have? Why are the, what, something is that, what is something that triggers their needs, right? What is their goals in life? What is their pain, right? And why would they want a product like yours? Then we go into where are they at okay so 
once you identify that person, let's just say you are selling a drill and you're selling to someone like me, all right? Where is someone like me hanging out there? Am I on Instagram? Am I reading magazines or blogs? Am I watching an exercise webinar? Um, where, are, where this person is? So once you identify this person, then you figure out how do you reach these people, right? So maybe you want to reach out to them directly, right? This is something that is totally um, underrated. I think not enough people do this, which I'm going to do with you later on. Uh, you can run paid ads to reach them. You can create content for them on social media. You can organize events to reach these people. But before you think about how you reach them, you have to figure out where they are, right? And before you figure out where they are, you have to figure out who your customers is. So a lot of people, a lot of businesses, they jump straight into how to reach them, you know, without identifying who their customers is. And that's why um, businesses fail. Okay. All right. So I prepared for you a small marketing framework, which I will branch through with you quickly. And I will share with you this little sheet here you can use for yourself and plan out a quick marketing strategy. Okay. So it's very simple. I'm just going to share with you on the chat section here. Please make a copy for yourself. Don't steal my copy. Right. And let's let me share my screen and I'll go and show you how to use it. All right, so make a copy for yourself. It's super simple, all right? It's nothing, nothing fancy here. It's just a Google shit anyway, yeah? Um, but the ideal marketing is to keep things simple. It's not to overcomplicate stuff. You don't have to overcomplicate stuff. I think most marketers, uh, including me myself, sometimes overcomplicate stuff, and that's not good. All right, everyone is good? All right. Okay, so cool. It's very, very simple. Um, you can play a bit more on your, on your own after this, but then uh, this is something to get you thinking about your customers, yeah? And this follows that little marketing strategy that I uh, showed you earlier, all right? So we're gonna plan a little bit here and then we're gonna do it for real, all right? At least I'm gonna do it for real and you're gonna be able to see me doing it and see my process of doing it. Okay, so in my example, I'm going to be selling USB microphones, all right? And uh, I, I don't know why I picked USB microphones to sell or to build, but then long story short, right? Back then, in, during the MCO, right? I, I bought a lot of uh, microphones, a lot of these USB microphones. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on the screen. Um, these are USB microphones, and you, you, you basically just use it with your, your computer, a lot of these things. So. Basically, I've overbought this stuff, yeah, and I started giving up these USB microphones to people who need them at the time. And now I have a supply of microphones at home, <laughs> and I don't know what to do with them. So I'm thinking of selling this microphone to maybe set up a side business or side hustle, whatever you call it, and sell these microphones to people who need them. Okay, so my business is I'm going to sell USB microphones to people. All right, so yours could be different. You plan it for yourself. All right, so I want to sell USB microphones. So who are my customers? So I'm going to think about my customers. All right, my customers are probably someone who are like me, right? Maybe they're marketers. Maybe they are trainers, right? Maybe they are content creators, okay? So you do this for yourself. I'm doing it as an example, but you do it for yourself, all right? Now, what are the desires? So each of your customers, your product might serve a few customers, right? Each of your customers might have a different need or different one. A different desire. So let me focus on trainers because I can think like a trainer and I know what trainers think, right? So what are the desires? Now, a trainer wants to sell more courses or they also want to do more training, right? So these are their desire, okay? Now, how does your product help them? So as a trainer, um, I mean, if you're talking about USB microphone, well, our USB microphone, make their, maybe their training more, or maybe seem more professional, okay? All right, so this is basically how we will, you know, map out uh, our cool, our customers is, what are desires, and how does your product or my product help them, all right? So a USB microphone might make their training seem more professional. Maybe they'll need one anyway to create content, right? Um, they'll need better sound to sell 
online courses. That's the same. Yeah. So this is how the product helps them. And you might notice immediately yeah, that even though I have the same product and different customers would have different desires and would have different benefits as well. So the same product might give a different benefit to a different type of customer. So it's so important to zoom down towards who your customers is, right? Think about what their desires are and how does the product help them. All right. All right, who's lost? Who needs help? Very easy, right? This is super easy. All good? Stay with me. This is the good part, yeah? We, we do, I do this for all the things I launch. So this is a good part of, of, of coming up with a marketing strategy that gets us to revenue. All right, so I'm going to assume that all of you are done, okay? All of you are good. It's easy to think about this. Um, and then once you're done with this, I'm going to move on to the next sheet, okay? So the next sheet would be, how do you introduce yourself? So Regina is good, great, thank you for your feedback. How do you introduce yourself? Um, and we talk about a landing page here. Now, here's what I believe, yeah? After doing marketing for so many years, right? I believe that you shouldn't build a landing page until you validate your product. Okay, that I'm serious. So a lot of people tell you, oh, you need to build a website, you need to set up an e-commerce store, you need to do this and that, and that, right? You don't have to do any of that. And the reason is because you is you want to limit your, you know, the amount you spend before you find something that works, right? So a lot of people, they actually set up websites, they sell this and that, trying to sell something, but then they don't actually do the real selling. Remember I talk about doing those non product non-revenue producing activities, this is what I'm talking about, okay? So we can actually skip this landing page for now, but we can come back to this later on, okay? So to quickly run through with, with you how to use this one, basically your landing page or website is an opportunity for you to introduce yourself, okay? So let's just say I'm selling USB microphones. So how do I introduce myself, all right? What's my promise? What is the unique selling point of what I'm offering? What is the risk reversal? That means uh, what if someone buys whatever I'm offering and then don't like it? What's the risk reversal, right? What is something that we can provide to them in return? And is there any testimonials or credibility they can actually check? So I'm going to skip the landing page for now, but we can come back to this later on during the Q&A section, okay? Now, we're going to go into where are they, all right? And um, this is simple, okay? So I'm going to delete all these things here first. Okay, so what I want you to do is start figure out where your audience are. So to use my example, I'm setting USC microphones and I'm targeting or reaching out to trainers because I can help them. I can help them make their training look more professional, right? So where are trainers uh, hanging out at? So maybe they are on YouTube. If they are on YouTube, what kind of videos are they watching on YouTube? Okay, what kind of trainers am I reaching out to? Maybe I'm reaching out to tech trainers and they're watching YouTube on, you know, how to, how to stream uh, on, on YouTube, right? Maybe they're watching these kind of things. How to stream tutorials. Okay, can I reach out to some of these content, content people who create how to stream tutorials on YouTube and maybe strike a partnership with them where I can actually sell my microphones to their viewers? Maybe, right? Um, social media. What groups do they follow? What groups are they in? Maybe on social media, there's a Malaysian trainer uh, group thingy. I can't remember what's it called. I'll show you later. But yeah, that's one group that all trainers are inside. So they are my perfect uh, you know, audiences that I'm going to reach out to and help, right? Now, who do they follow? Uh, what events do they go to? What are some non-competing business that they are actually consuming from or buying from? Right? Maybe, maybe there's an online um, course company in Malaysia that I can partner with and also sell my microphones to. Maybe. Right? So, what you want to do here is to figure out where your customers are. Okay? I'm not going to go too deep into this one, but I get, I, I'm guessing that you know the, the idea. Uh, cash shape budget microphones. Then, also, yeah, maybe you're looking for, you know, what are the top five budget microphones in Malaysia? You know? <laughs> Because they don't want to spend a lot. This this trainers, trainers are stingy people. All right, so you get the idea. Okay, so you do this for yourself. Map out as clear and as distinct as possible on who you can actually reach out to and where they are. Okay. Okay, and the last sheet here is basically for you to 
track every single thing. So as you do marketing, right, there's not one way that will get you, <laughs> there's not one way that will give you everything. You have to try a few things. Maybe you try reaching out to them personally. Maybe you try doing this, doing that. And you have to find out the recipe that works for you. So here is basically where you put out your, your, you know, your numbers and to see whether it converts for you. So you want to track everything, make sure you track and you want to see which marketing strategy is giving you the results. Okay. All right. I'm not going to waste too much time on this one here because I don't bore you with all this Google Sheet stuff, but you can figure it out on your own. Okay. Yeah, not, not stingy, cost effective. We are cost effective, all right? I am cost effective. Okay, so everyone's good? You've just gone through like, like half of it, yeah? So I'm not gonna bore you with too much theory stuff and all that, but then this is important to get start thinking about your, your customers and how you can reach out to them. So very says good, Justin says good, thank you. Um, that's great. Okay, so let's move on. Let's move on, I know this is, could sound basic to you, but it's so important. Okay, so I'm going to go into the case study of building a 1,000 business in a month. All right, so full on disclaimer, a 1,000 business is might seem very small to you. Okay, I mean, I think it's small. I think 1,000 is very little today. Uh, but to some people, building a 1,000 business might be a revelation. Maybe you have not built a business before. And once they see that first 1,000 that comes into their business, that's great. That builds momentum and the point of this case study is to give you an idea of or inspiration yeah to build up your business to a 1000 business and then from there you scale up on so every business starts off as a small thing right every big fire starts off as a small amber and you want to start off small that way as well so it's the same concept here all right so like i said like i mentioned earlier i'm going to be selling uh usc microphones and i'm going to be using the next 30 days uh, even outside after this uh, session to sell these microphones. I have not actually thought about doing this until I prepared content for today's session. Yeah, and I thought like, okay, I'm just going to try selling these microphones as a side business or a side hustle and give you an example of how I'm going to do it. I'm going to be documenting the whole process of doing it. Who am I reaching out to? Who, how, how many people buy? What kind of marketing strategies I'm using? SEO, paid ads, whatever, and put it down into a post so that you can actually follow it and to learn from the mistakes I made, what I've learned, whether I succeeded or whether I failed, okay? So if you like to actually um, be notified or be alerted, right, for, for all the updates that I do, let's go to this link here. I'm just gonna get this link, okay, and share with you. You will see a little pop-up form when you click on that link there. Um, let me just show you this. Let me just show you quickly, okay? So you're going to go to this page here. I've written out a quick blog post here. Um, and I'm going to be updating what I'm going to be doing and my process through the next 30 days, yeah, even after this session. Because this session is just about an hour plus, and I cannot cover too many things. So go and click on this link here. You see this pop up. Go put in your email there, and I'll update you on the updates that happens as I build this to a $1,000 business, OK? Yeah, I think I need the HTTP there. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my slides and just brief you what I'm going to be doing. Okay, and we're going to do some practicals later on. All right, so um, you got the links. Now, I'm going to be selling USB microphones. Uh, it's something that I've not done and it's something that I've not something that I do usually, right? But I'm going to sell a microphone. So now let's just think of myself as a microphone seller, which is quite uncommon, yeah? Now, First of all, I might, I will think, right? Who would buy a microphone? So just now I give you some ideas, right? Teachers, trainers, content creators, marketers might actually buy a microphone. Maybe you, right? Maybe you like to be my customer, first customer, that's great, right? Uh, so teachers, content creators, marketers will buy a microphone, right? And why would they need a microphone in the first place? What kind of problems are they solve for them? Maybe they can sell more courses. If I'm focusing now on trainers, yeah? Maybe they can sell more courses, they can deliver their message much better. They can share about their products better. Uh, maybe you, if you are a salesperson, you can actually, you know, run more efficient sales presentations. You know, you you have been to those sales presentations where you cannot hear what they are saying, 
and then it annoys you, right? So you don't become that kind of person. Okay. Now, here are some challenges selling a microphone. And just like your business, your products, you also will have challenges. So to me, I think the challenges in selling a microphone would be microphones are a commodity, right? If you Google this microphone up, you probably be able to find a cheaper, um, someone selling it for much cheaper, maybe from China, maybe somewhere else. Okay, maybe a fake as well. So it's a commodity. And the danger of selling a commodity is it's a race to the bottom because you're just selling cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and basically the cheapest one wins, right? But that's something that we have to avoid. Number two, people don't wake up thinking about microphone. <laughs> you don't wake up this morning and like, oh, I want to think about what kind of microphone to buy. No, nobody does that, right? A microphone doesn't, doesn't actually solve a problem. It's the result of having a microphone that solves the problem for people. Okay. Now, competitors are playing the price war. So like I said, it's a race to the bottom. Lazada, Shopee, it's a price war out there. So what can we do? Now, here are some ideas. And here's why I think this would be a great case study for me in the next 30 days to try to sell, to try to move to a $1,000 business and to prove to you that the marketing strategy that I'm showing you actually works. Okay. So first of all, what we can do is we need to figure out how to add value. So instead of just selling, yeah, instead of just selling a, <clears throat> a microphone, we have to think about how we can add value towards selling and bundling a microphone together with it. Number two, we have to figure out their real problems. Like I said, people don't wake up thinking about a microphone, right? A microphone is just a tool. So what is the real problem that we are solving here? And just like your products, what is the real problem that you're solving? And we'll look at positioning differently when we're selling a microphone. All right. So if I apply that same marketing strategy that I've shown you before, right? Um, so what do I mean? Well, I can help people create better content, better tutorials. A microphone is just something that I sell on the side. Who's my customers? Maybe corporate trainers. Where are they at? LinkedIn, Facebook groups. They're searching on Google for stuff. They're on YouTube. They're trying to sell their courses on online sites like Udemy. Um, what else? Skillshare maybe. How do, they, how do I reach them? Well, I can reach out to them directly, create helpful content for them, partner with sites, companies who have a lot of trainers and more. Okay, I'm gonna pause here for a moment, okay? And let you imagine that you are me in my position right now. Now, what's your next step? What are you gonna do next? You have microphones, right? A lot of them, you wanna start a business and you wanna reach um, corporate trainers, people who train people for a living. Okay, so what are you gonna do next? Marketing. Let's put in your marketing hats. Let me suggest a few marketing strategies. How am I going to reach out to my customers? What are you going to do next? Let's go. There's no wrong or right, yeah? There's just a combination of ideas from everyone here. So if you're going to sell microphones, what are you going to do? How would you start marketing? All right? Let's hear from everyone. So everyone has their own ideas, which is great. I'm learning from you too. Yeah. So how would you sell microphones? So by the way, this microphone is around, uh, around 200 ringgit. It's not exactly expensive, yet it's not very cheap. I was, I'll think so. Yeah. It's very versatile. This microphone actually works with your PC, your Mac. Uh, it even works with an iPad or a mobile phone as well. So if you're doing things like Clubhouse, if you're doing things like Skype, Zoom, you can use a microphone like this, okay? Works really, really well. And this is called a condenser microphone, by the way. Okay, let's look at the answers here. Thank you for that, yeah? Thank you for that. Um, Justin says, sell product in Marketplace, run paid ads. Now, that's great. The only reserve I have about selling in Marketplace is that we are going to be in a price war, okay? Uh, it's not wrong, yeah, but if we are going to be in a price war because people just compare by price if everyone sells the same microphone in the marketplace then just sort by price choose the cheapest one right um so yeah we have to add value then um cash says create video showcasing problems during a trading session just like this right maybe you're listening to me right now and you figure out hey ruben's voice is kind of nice huh compared to a lot of other webinars i've been to hmm he sells microphone too yeah that works as well right um, <laughs> uh, Grayson, run ads targeting that group and get their leads. Yeah, that could be one as well. So if you can identify a group, you know, maybe in a LinkedIn 
uh, group somewhere, we can probably run some ads there and you know, reach out to them. That's also great. Yeah. Uh, Ruben, are you the ambassador of the microphone? <laughs> I'm not ambassador of microphone. I'm just using it as an example, okay? I just happen to be a great ambassador. And yeah, they should make me ambassador, by the way. Um, <clears throat> get attention from a corporate speaker through social media, create content, target them. Perfect, right? We can teach corporate speakers to be able to do more with the help of a microphone, maybe. Yeah, Virgin, uh, video content marketing, Affiliate marketing. I'm an affiliate marketer as well. Not a big one, but affiliate marketing is great. It's great for pocket money. I think yes, affiliate marketing is good as well. Yeah, uh, agreed. But many business owner will go for marketplace first to get free traffic. That's a great idea. Yeah, of course. If you're starting small, you can start off with marketplace first and then build up from there. Again, no wrong, no right. I think that's a great idea. So I would definitely do that also. Okay, because the marketplace is a place where we have people who are ready to buy. So if you're selling something. Uh, that people want to buy right now yeah go to marketplace you can find a lot of sellers i mean buyers there already okay so thank you for your answers okay so we're going to do here is your answers are all great all right now the mistake that most business owners make with a new business is that they go out first thing first we pay ads yeah i'm sure you've seen people like this they start off a new maybe a cafe or a new product and then they run ads and then they see oh what's the best tactic on facebook to get a lot of people to see my ads and buy from me all right um and the reason why they run ads is because they fear rejection it's true uh, they fear rejection they fear this going up to someone and say hey justin would you want to buy my my usb microphone no uh you know they fear that rejection okay and that's why they hide behind ads so the idea here, if you are starting a business from zero to a thousand, you have to validate first before you spend money. So when you run to pay ads, you are spending money. You're taking a big risk there. Okay. If you're building a site, you're also taking a risk there. You're paying money, you're spending time, your effort to you know build a site where nobody wants to visit. All right. All right. So my suggestion and what I'll do first is to reach out to prospects. All right. So there's a few ways to reach out prospects. Uh, we can ask in person, we can talk over the phone, over Zoom, there's a chat in a live session like this with you, um, direct email. You don't have to create a website yet and you don't want to run paid ads yet. So I'll give you a quick example, yeah? <clears throat> um, you know, about two weeks ago in, at Lead, yeah? So Lead is basically a tech institute where we teach um, digital marketing, web development, and also data science. So we run this bootcamp and this bootcamp uh, we had this demo day where we needed people to come in and judge during that event. So how do I find judges? Now, what I'll do is just ask them in person, right? So like the, the image you see there is just me asking this uh, chief data officer, which I do not know. I've not met him. Um, and he's data officer of Custom. You heard of Custom, right? And <clears throat> I've just basically said, hey, you know, I, I'm looking to get you as a judge. Can you do it or not, right? And most people out there, they're looking to help you out, right? Um, and yeah, you just get a response like that. So sometimes in marketing, it's a bit, you know, you don't have to complicate it. Just make it simple. Ask someone some something and they will help you with it, all right? Okay, so coming back to a USB microphone. Now, how would I ask someone if they would buy something here? I could ask you, you guys also say, hey, would you want to buy this microphone? Um, you buy it from me, what I'll do is I'll teach you how to use it, how to hook it up with your Zoom, how to create content with it, how to create good sound, right? Whether you're at home, at the office, and how do you even do podcasting? Would you want to buy one? It's only 300 ringgit. Just like that, right? I can ask all of you here. Now, if you want to buy, let me know. I'm going to put in my email here. Just drop me an email. I'll send you one uh, by, by today itself. All right? Now, I'm just joking, but you can as well. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is to just reach out to people. And I'm going to do this practically. Yeah? Okay, so I'm going to go into my, <clears throat> my browser here. So how do we reach out to people straight away? Now, this is something that is totally underrated. And I think a lot of people are not doing this enough. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm just going to go into Facebook, okay? And I'm going to reach out to some people. I'm going to do this live in front of you. Okay, so who would be in the market for uh, a USB microphone? I'm going to start just talking to people, okay? So I'm going to go into my chat. Maybe I'm going to go into searching for someone. Yeah, so I invited this guy called Darren. I think probably some of you would know him as well, yeah? Uh, into a boot camp that I run, the, the data science boot camp I run like two weeks ago. And he said, <laughs> you have a very pleasant voice. Do you do podcasts? Okay, I'm going to probe him a little bit, yeah? Hey, Darren, this came into my mind, yeah? Just came into my mind. Do you do podcasts? All right, and what I'm going to do from here is <clears throat> I'm just going to talk to him and figure out his three things. Remember? Triggers, right? His problems and also goals. Remember those three uh, psychographical stuff, right? So I'm going to talk to Darren and say, hey, Darren, just came to mind. Um, do you do podcasts? And then he might say like, oh, yeah, I, I do a bit of podcasts, but then, you know, I kind of stopped doing podcasts for a while. And I'm going to ask him, oh, you stopped the podcast. Why did you stop the podcast? You know, and I'm going to probe and probe and probe and probe until I find something that I can help him out with. Right. So when it comes to doing sales like this or validating your, validating your product, you don't have to build a website. You don't have to build a landing page. You just want to go out there and talk to people and then offer them your product. Yeah. If they don't want, then you learn something or you ask them for a referral. All right, so this is one example. Let me just do another one since we're here. <clears throat> mm, let's go and talk to who else can we talk to? Dan. Dan. Okay. Hey, Ben. Just wondering, man. Uh, are you still looking for mics? Remember, you asked me that day. So what we are doing here is, yeah, we are building conversations with people. So a lot about a lot of setting, right, is a result of building conversations. It's about talking to people, understanding the problems they have, and then approaching them with a solution, right? And what I'll do is I'll think about the top 10 people that I can reach out to and just directly, you know, drop in a message like this or email them or go to LinkedIn and message them. It's as simple as that. Okay, so these guys are probably working right now, so they won't respond to me right now, maybe later. But again, I want to document this whole process here and put it up in my blog. That's why you want to follow this so I can share with you what's going to happen, who am I going to be able to sell to, what's my sales process, how am I marketing it, how am I going to scale it up to a thousand, and you get the idea. Okay, so for now, I'm going to go back to my slides. All right. All right, so there's many ways to reach out to prospects, but before you do anything, please, please, please go and validate your product or services to see if people want to buy it or not. So I could ask maybe like 10 or 20 people, and if nobody wants to buy it, then something is wrong, right? I have to fix it. I have to ask them, why do you not want to buy it from me? What's, you don't, do you not see value, you know? And all those kind of stuff, right? You get the idea. So before you run ads, before you go into doing SEO, uh, content marketing, just reach out to people you know and see if they will buy or not. All right? Okay. Now, I know a lot of you. I'm a mind reader. A lot of you are going to say, ah, oh, Ruben is like salesy, man. I don't like selling. Selling sucks. I want to do yeah, e-commerce so I can hide behind e-commerce. I don't have to be there. Right? Let them buy them for themselves. That's what people tell me. Now, if you have this thought in your mind, I don't like to sell, right? Then it's probably because you're not selling something that you're proud of. All right, that's it. Um, if I were to sell this, this microphone, I know that it would help them, all right? Now, selling things to me is like giving education to people, right? It's like teaching them something. And as a result of what I sell, whether it's a product or a service, they experience a positive change out of it, right? So the only reason that you don't enjoy selling is because you're feeling like a cheat, right? You're not selling something you're proud of. And that is why you see a lot of people in, you know, direct sales or selling products and all that. They are often a, a bit shy about selling, right? Some of them, not all, some of them, because they don't believe in the product themselves, right? And when you don't believe in your own product, you're not going to be proud of selling that product. But if you are proud, if you believe in selling that product, 
then selling is not actually selling it's more like educating people all right now i remember you know um <clears throat> to tell a quick story right so this is like five or six years ago or more actually i joined a company called mobile ads um they're still around but they're not operating anymore they're still around um, but they're doing and focusing somewhere else so this company called mobile ads you can just look up their site as so mobile ads.com so this company is a company that creates interactive ads on a mobile phone so if you do, if you were to go to media websites like the star says.com sometimes you come across these mobile ads right like those like they come out as games they come out as videos and all that right and well it's quite an amazing uh, product itself so i joined the company as business director right and what i did was i went around kl right knocking on the doors of marketing agencies to sell uh, the solution right and at that time even though i was cold calling even though i was knocking on doors i didn't really feel like you know it was a drag of selling because i believe in the product right and i believe that the product actually helped those agencies do better and doing the activity it got me to work with people like nando's TNB Malaysia by just knocking on doors, yeah, and that's because I believe in the product itself. So if you say that you don't like selling, that's probably because you're not selling something that you're proud of. All right, as simple as that. Okay, so think about who are the ten people you can reach out to, and you want to create an Excel sheet and track your progress. That's really about it. So to start any business, again, a business start off small. A fire starts out small before it becomes big. Same thing, right? You want to find out uh, who is the top 10 people you can reach out to and then just reach out to them. So here is another example of me reaching out to someone who I want to invite to speak in an interview session with me. He's in the US. He's a book author, someone much, much more accomplished than me. He writes this book called The, the Goal Giver, right? So what I do, um, I just go out there and say, hey, you know, I'm inspired by your work in writing. I, I run a small business. I like to talk about you. Um, and yeah, would you like to be in the interview? And you say, I will enjoy that very much, right? So sometimes you just have to reach out to people and ask That's about it, right? Okay. Now, so I'm going to give you some ideas before we go into some more practicals, okay? So for example, you can also go to forums like Loya, if you're in Malaysia, yeah? Loya and all that, to look for things that people are talking about, the problems that people are talking about. So when you go to places like forums, you find people talking about all sorts of different problems, right? And if, if you can solve that problem, you can just join in the conversation and reach out to them personally. That's really about it, all right? I'm gonna stop and see some of the comments here. What do you have for me? All right, so Cash say, if it's a cold market, can I still use phone call? um okay so i already know that i i'm not a fan of cold calling yeah uh although i have asked you to use things like you know reaching out to them in person on the phone over zoom facebook chat i'm not a big fan of cold calling and the reason for that is because with cold calling right it's like it's like being a beggar you know you call up people hello you know how are you today you know i'd like to talk to you about this and people will be like oh you know <laughs> and the the chances of success is very low yeah, if you call like 10 or 20 people, you probably get, you know, into the doors of maybe two or three people, right? And the reason for that is because, well, people maybe they, they, they pity you and just give you a chance, right? And you don't want that. Um, so I, I really don't encourage you to do much cold calling. I would just, you know, reach out to people that I know first, that I know that I can help, and then see if I, my, my products or service actually solve a problem that they have, all right? Jean say, cool, we are proud of your own product. That's great. Uh, Misan says, awesome. All right, what else do you have for me? Okay, so I mean, let me just go and give you a quick example, yeah? Since we are here, since we are doing this, I'm going to go into my Chrome again. Um, no, both of these guys have not actually responded to me. It's okay. Uh, let's see what's going to happen after that, okay? Now, so how do we go into forums? So I'm not an active member in Loya, right? Uh, but I know a lot of people are talking about stuff. So what we can do here is we're going to for, uh, sorry, Loyan, right? And I'm just going to type in like USB microphone or, or you know, some people are going to be talking about how to sell uh, online courses, right? There we go. So you can see that some people are talking about how to sell video content online, right? And because I'm selling USB microphone, these are my market here. So I'm going to go inside here. 
and you know I'm gonna see what are they talking about, all right? Uh, okay, so this is quite old since last year, right? Hi all, I was thinking to sell some video courses. Have anyone have any experience how to start? Which platform to go for? Um, da da da, right? So what I'll do uh, is I will sign up as a member, right? Join in a conversation and maybe send him a DM and say, Hey John, are you still looking to sell video courses, right? Uh, I, I saw your thread. Are you still looking to sell video courses? And John might say, oh yeah, you know, I wanted to, but I have not started. And I'm going to say, hey, you know, like, what if I help you out with that? You know, I can actually help you out. I have some experience running some uh, courses on Udemy and, and you know, I, can, I could give you some pointers, right? See if I help you, right? I have like 1,005 students here. Would you like to, to you know, need to help you? And John might say, oh yeah, wow, you have 1,005 students on Udemy. Okay. Tell me what you know. <laughs> and then slowly I'll work with him, find out what triggers him, find out his problems, how it goes, and then maybe sell him a USB microphone. <laughs> right? It's that simple. And I'm not saying it's easy to do, it takes time, it takes uh, effort. But yeah, that's really about selling. It's about educating people and then seeing how you can help them with your products or services. So that's how we use forums to look for customers. Right? We don't have to use paid ads. All right, let's go into more. All right, feel free to ask your questions, yeah? Uh, I'm, I'm going a bit fast because we are past 3 o'clock, okay? I'm supposed to go into Q&A pretty soon, but then, um, you know, we're going to spend a bit more time here. Okay, so quick question for all of you here. Now, what's wrong with this statement here? You know, when, when uh, maybe you might also do this kind of thing, you might make this mistake as well. So you're a salesperson, or maybe you approach a salesperson and say, oh, you need to buy this, this, and this, because it will help you with this and that, that. Now, what's wrong with this? Let me can help me with this. What's wrong with this when we, when you use such statements? Okay. I feel like you're trying to sell more things to me instead of helping me, correct? Uh, sounds like aggressive selling, hard sell. True, pushy, yeah, sounds pushing. What else? What else? I am looking for one specific answer. All right, I think I think I push you into us telling me too many answers. Now I've not created a slide for that, but <laughs> they look happy though. <laughs> yeah, people don't like to be sold. Yeah. People don't like to be sold. And one of the things that, you know, when, when salespeople, when salespeople go out to you and say, you need to buy X, Y, and Z because it helps you, because this is so great, because my product can change your skin or whatever, they don't know. They don't know what you need, right? The problem with this is because, well, the people they are reaching out to, you do not know them. You do not know what they need. And you're just pushing a product, assuming that they need this product. So what does assuming means? Assume means making an S, of you and me, right? So don't assume. When it comes to you know reaching out people, don't assume that they want to buy a microphone, they want to buy something, you have to probe and ask them questions. Um, I saw the question from Jimmy. I'll show you a method to do that, okay? In logistics industry. All right, so when you talk to people, I'll give you a few more tips here, yeah? Uh, a little bit more sales tips, but then this will help you. Now, when you talk to people, here's how to listen. You will go to approach them and say, hey, how is business going, right? And then opens up a little thing. Uh, people might say, oh, business is good. Business can be better. Hmm. Can be better? What do you mean? So basically, you want to ask questions that probe up, uh, to probe up the problems that they have and then see if you can solve the problem for them, right? You can ask a question like, what are you currently working on? Oh, I'm working on this thing, yeah? Or oh, working on that video, TV, you know? And you might find uh, an area where you can really help, right? Mm, what does a solution look like for you? Uh, or what's been missing with a current service or product that they are using, right? So these this are some sales questions that you might probably ask, but then I think this is a quite effective, okay? Now, once you ask the questions and probe them with some questions, they will tell you things. So, um, you know, like sounds like X, Y, and Z, you, you said like, you know, uh, creating great videos or great content videos is important for you, right? Sounds like that's important for you. 
um, understand that videos are important for you and I can I think I can help you out with content marketing are you all right if I suggest you something so here's the important takeaway here yeah if you take out one thing here when you talk to people don't sell right you always ask for permission before you sell something right so before you push in a product or a solution always ask for permission are you all right if I suggest something are you all right if I you know uh, propose you something if they say yes then you move into your selling okay so a lot of people they make the mistake of hey you need this product right now I think it will help you in your content marketing go and buy it right now and people are like whoa, whoa, whoa that, that's a bit pushy right so always ask for permission first all right all right I'm going to show you a quick example here yeah of people who does not ask for permission so what you want to do and right, what you want to avoid when you're reaching out to people is you want to avoid being needy. So I took this video in, um, I think a few months back, early this year in February or, or March, I can't remember. And there's this group of salespeople here, right? Uh, they're selling insurance, like, yeah? so I hope I don't offend anybody who is selling insurance. But I believe that insurance agents who do this are just positioning themselves for failure. I look at the guy, look at the guy trying to approach people. Right? Look at him. This is going around begging people to buy. Look at that. Yeah, he's begging a lady to buy his insurance, to look at his insurance. And what he's doing here is he's not asking for permission. He's just approaching people. Right? And the sad thing about this is a lot of people do this in real life, in, in digital marketing as well. The girls approach say, hey, buy my USB microphone. Yeah. <laughs> and this is just a recipe, right? For failure. So don't ever do this. Yeah, don't be needy. Don't say, oh, I need you to buy my stuff. I need to see this product I have. Uh, look at this right now. If people don't want it, it's fine. All right? Okay, uh, enough of this video, yeah? Again, I'm not going to, I, I'm not pointing any fingers at any insurance agent. I'm just going to show you a quick example. This is just an example for learning sake, okay? So, now once you talk to these people that you approach later on with, with chats, with forums, or whatever, right? And you've gone through a few things, you have to close that person, all right? If you let your customers talk all the time, they'll talk until I don't know when, right? So you have to come up with an ultimate clause. And this is my ultimate clause. So you have done everything you have done, but the fellow or the, your customer is not ready to buy, right? So you're gonna ask him this question or her this question. Is there any reason you won't sign up me today? And the reason why this question works is because when you ask this question, what's going to happen is they are going to think about uh, why are they not signing up with you? And they're going to tell you, oh, you know, um, I, I don't feel like buying a USB microphone today because mm, I don't have the budget this month. Well, okay, would you have the budget next month? <laughs> you know, so you ask this question, they'll tell you why they're not buying it. And then you follow up with something to move into the close. Is there any reason why you won't buy the USB microphone from me? uh i think it's too expensive or what would be a fair price <laughs> okay so this is my ultimate clause i've used this for a lot of sales situation i think it works not just for sales but also for marketing as well so use it it's amazing um go and use it see if it works for you let me know what's the results from your from you using this okay now a lot of you are going to say what if they reject me all right so yeah you're going to get a lot of rejections so remember the fear of rejection that uh, prevents a lot of business owners from not taking what they want doing what they want to do this is a part so if they reject you just move on yeah uh, the truth is you can only sell to people who wants to be sold right um, i like to use the analogy of gyms so if you're a gym owner right you cannot sell someone who does not want to get up from the bed to come to the gym yeah he'll never want to work out right and even if you successfully sell someone like that sold someone like that they or he or she will get buyer's remorse. They, are, they won't actually enjoy the purchase. And if someone doesn't want to buy something, I wouldn't actually sell that to him. I don't want to actually create this kind of negative buyer's remorse. So I don't actually do any hard or pressure sell. Right? And two things that you can learn from here, when people reject you, right? use the referral technique. So for example, if I were to sell USB microphones to the, the two gentlemen earlier, right? I'll say, hey, you know, I think using a USB microphone will help you improve your your, your, your video quality and that will get you a lot of viewers right and they say oh you know i just don't want to buy a usb microphone right now and or maybe i already have a microphone 
okay, I totally understand that you're not going to buy a USB microphone. Who do you think will actually buy a USB microphone? So you only use the referral technique to ask them about who else in your network want to buy a USB microphone. And that creates that referral effect. So if they reject you, it's great. Ask for a referral. Okay. Uh, learn from the field. So is this learn from the field? So you can, you can ask them, you know, um, what would make it easy for me to sell you this thing? And then you ask asking questions, they tell you, and you learn from them, and then you improve your products and services the next time you reach out to someone else. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to move in a little bit more quickly, yeah, to find out what people are searching for and give you a few more techniques. So we have gone through a few things where I've taught you to, you know, reach out to people, just start asking and get early validation. So it's so important to validate, yeah, before you build any websites. So once you actually validate something, right, you can also use this little technique with SEO to find out what people are searching for and then create content that answers their searches, okay? So uh, to do this, I will show you very quickly using Keyword Planner on Google Ads. It's very simple, okay? Two things. So I'm going to share my screen again. All right. So let's just say you want to create some content, yeah? And you want to find out what people are searching for. Because if people are searching on Google, they're normally searching for a problem, uh, a solution to a problem they are facing. So there are two ways to search for those kind of things. One, is to simply just use Google, yeah? So I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to search for how to make money on Udemy, okay? All right, do you see this section called people also ask? Can I earn money from Udemy? How much do I get paid from Udemy? How much money can a beginner make from Udemy? How does it? So these are people who are wondering, right, about how to make money from Udemy. And we know that these people are probably trainers. They probably want to you know, sell a course. So if we can put up a content for these keywords here, that's great. So these here are in fact our keywords. So you create a content to answer these questions that you have here. Can I earn more from Demi? How much do you get paid from Demi and more? Okay, so simple, just like that. Now, the second method is to go into somewhere like Google Ads. Okay, so you do have to sign up for a Google Ads account. Uh, you don't have to actually, you don't have to actually, um, you know, uh, pay anything to, to use it, yeah? I'm just gonna use one of my accounts to show you how to do this, okay? I'm going to be it. Uh, and under the Google Ads campaign, all right? You wanna go into the tool settings. Okay, I'm not running any campaigns currently. You wanna go into the tool settings here, and there's this thing called Keyword Planner, right? So Keyword Planner is for you to actually plan uh, to find out keywords that people are actually searching for on Google to run ads for them. But we're going to use this to determine if there's a market for this. So I'm going to do discover new keywords. And then I'm going to search for something like USB microphone to see if people are searching for it in Malaysia. You see this Malaysia here? Okay, I'm going to click on get results, right? Now, there will be a recording of this uh, session, so you can actually go through this again, yeah? And I can see that, it's a bit small, I can see that USB microphones, yeah? USB microphone is about 720 searches a month. So that tells me that, oh, there are people searching for USB microphones. There is a market, right? Um, and these are basically numbers of, you know, bidding in terms of ads. So basically use Google Ads or Keyword Planner to find out the keywords that people are searching for. And then what you do is then create content to answer the questions that they are asking. All right. Uh, Google Trends is great, but Google Trends is a bit broad. So uh, as in broad, as in it's broad, but the keywords you see here is more targeted. So when I, when I say things like USB microphone, that's the exact keyword people are using for to find out something. So we are no very clear cut, yeah? With Google Trends, you are looking at trends. Those are very broad uh, questions. You're looking at, oh, is the trend of USB microphones increasing or decreasing, okay? All right. <laughs> so I hope that answers the question. Let me just move on, yeah? So Google Keyword Planner is, is great. It's, it's free to use, you can use it for free. Uh, you do have to sign up for a Google Ads account, but you don't have to pay anything, okay? All right, what else? Okay, so this one here would uh, answer the earlier question from, um, 
from Fu. Uh, let me find your name here. From Jimmy. Okay, Jimmy. So Jimmy asked earlier, right? How can you apply uh, reaching out to people with logistics industry? All right. So if you're in logistics industry, you want to look at who is the decision maker? Who would you, you who would you sell to? Yeah? Are you selling to a, a a purchaser, right? And where are purchasers? So first of all, you want to identify where your customers are or where your prospects are. Maybe they are on LinkedIn. So whether they are on LinkedIn or whether they are on Facebook, one of the great ways to build dialogues, to build conversation with people is to use polls. Yeah. And you can use polls on Facebook, you can use polls on LinkedIn, they work very, very effective. All you have to do is just ask something and then see what people respond. So this is an amazing technique. Yeah. So the reason this works is because people like sharing their thoughts, expertise on Facebook, Instagram, and also LinkedIn. And you use this to probe who's got a problem you can help and solve. So let me show you this live um, on Facebook, okay? So for, for Jimmy, you probably want to do this on maybe LinkedIn because I think people who are in logistics industry would probably be in uh, LinkedIn, right? Uh, these two gentlemen is too busy today. So anyway, there's this group in Malaysia, right? I see there's a few groups there, uh, corporate trainers. I'm going to show you. So I'm, I'm selling USB microphone there. Malaysian Corporate Trainer Network, right? So there are 5.7K members here, okay? And, um, you know, I can actually ask a poll, okay? So <clears throat> do any of you sell yeah, I'm wondering, do any of you sell online courses on places like Udemy? What are your biggest problems uh, or biggest challenges, yeah? challenges when creating courses for those uh, platforms? Okay, and I'm going to put a poll, maybe uh, video shooting content quality, right? Audio issues. Um, what else? What are, what are other problems that people might have when they try to sell a course on Udemy? Again, this group is the group of corporate trainers, right? I know these people are trainers. What do you think? Price. Uh, not sure how to price. That's good. What else? Mm. Video shooting, content quality, uh, not sure how to take good videos, content quality, speech. Maybe they're, they're not very good in speech and they're selling to an international market, they might feel a bit shy, right? Uh, not confident in speech. What else? Okay, anyway, out of content ideas, okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to change this. No content ideas. Following Grayson's uh, possession, right? All right, so this is just a quick poll, right? And what you're gonna do here is you're gonna click on this post, just like that. Now, what's gonna happen, yeah, is because people are all experts on Facebook, right? <laughs> they will come here and they will just start, you know, clicking down, click, 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 click on this this poll here. What's gonna happen next is you're gonna be able to see who click on audio issues. Ah, so we're gonna do next. Next thing you're gonna do is gonna approach those people and say, hey. I noticed you, thanks for answering my, my poll. I noticed you have some audio issue problems when it comes to selling courses on Udemy. Uh, what, what kind of problems are you facing? And then you talk to them, you answer them and say, hey, I have a USB microphone that might solve a problem. Would you be, would you be okay if I suggest it? Right? So polls are amazing. And if you go to LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn are filled with polls like that, right? I, I can't show you right now. But <laughs> you see all these things here? So these are all polls. And yeah, all these polls, right? So basically, people are using that to probe the problems and challenges that people have. And then they're looking to reach out to them and sell them something. OK, I hope that's a great tip, right? All right, so I'm going to go back to my slides, yeah? So I um, hope that helped you. For example, you can see that I've shared a poll on uh, developer Kaki, and a lot of people answer that. So from here, I'm able to identify the problems that they have and move into looking for a solution to help them. Okay. All right. So 
Um, I'm almost done. Just a few more slides. So once you've done all that, yeah, and the next time, another idea I want to share with you is to build relationships by helping people and then maybe selling. So uh, one of the best ways to do this is to collect someone's uh, people's email, your audience email. So the way you collect emails is not just go up to people and collect the email. You collect people's email in exchange for something that they receive in value, right? So create something that actually helps people and you collect their emails in exchange and you actually want to help them. Then you build relationship with them through conversations via email. And why emails? Now, emails is one of the, I would say the cheapest way to market and to reach out to people, right? Imagine if today you have an email list of maybe a thousand uh, subscribers or people who follows you, who likes your content, loves what you do. Anytime you have something new, all you have to do is just click one button, right? One email, click one button, and you'll be able to reach 1,000 people who are following you list like that, right? So I believe that email marketing is something that is underrated as well. A lot of people are not using it enough. Um, you can use something like MailChimp to do so. Yeah, I'm using MailChimp and we have about 10,000 plus subscribers at least. Yeah, and that is basically the fuel of our business. Now, Exabytes also has their own email software, I believe. I've not used it, but from the last I checked, it's quite affordable as well. So like, for example, if you look at the eBus line, that will just cost you about 25 ringgit per month for up to about 1,000 subscribers. And that's very, very affordable compared to a lot of other types of email marketing softwares like MailChimp, GetResponse, Aweber. Those are in USD and those are quite expensive, right? So sometimes a lot of people sign up for things like MailChimp but they don't use like 80% of all the features in there. So therefore, they're paying for things that they don't actually use. So if you want to give, go simple, start small, I would suggest you to go with something like, you know, uh, Exabytes, Ebus, like uh, marketing platform. And I think that that's great enough, yeah? You get really, really fine with that. Okay, so this is my last slide. Now, what's next? Once they found at least three buyers, <clears throat> which I'm going to do for the next 30 days to find three buyers at least for my microphone, then we are ready to scale. Now, only then, once I've validated something, I will go and buy a domain on exabytes.com.my. I'll go and buy something like usbmicrophone.my, uh, set up a quick, easy website so that people can actually see uh, the testimonials that I have on, on, on the business. And then what I want to do is I want to build a business that my customer would actually want to share and talk about. And that's how we build something that grows in, 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 yeah, basically that grows. Okay. All right. So in last, I just want to quickly share with you um, the point number four here, right? So I talk about build a business that your customer want to share about. So how do you do that? So the truth is most of the business that are amazing today, they don't run paid ads, okay? Um, Quick example I can share with you is probably like, like Tesla. So the Tesla run like million dollar budget TV ads or Facebook ads or Instagram ads so that you know about Tesla or did someone tell you about Tesla, right? So the same goes for your own business. You want to build a business that where your customers would tell other people about your business. That's the best case scenario, okay? So running on paid advertisements is not sustainable. What sustains is your own customers telling other customers, all right? And the last kind of example I'll give you is CrossFit. <laughs> I use this example a lot because I do CrossFit. That's me in the picture, right? And uh, with CrossFit, right, I tend to tell everyone about it for some stupid reason. I don't know why. So CrossFit is basically like a, a gym routine where you cross everything together. So you do gymnastics, you do weightlifting, you do running, everything. That's why I call CrossFit. Right? So people in CrossFit is a bit crazy. It's like they're in a cow or something like that. And what happens in CrossFit is the own customers, yeah, the people who do CrossFit will tell other people about CrossFit as well. And I find myself doing that as well. I'm telling people about, hey, you should come and join me one day. Hey, come and do, come and join me in, in this place. It's amazing, you know? Um, so putting it back to you, you want to build a business where your customers tell other customers about your business. That's the best case scenario. All right? So to quickly recap, <laughs> Bob Lowe, yeah. So uh, some doubts to recap, yeah. Now, some of you might think uh, following Ruben's method, you'd be bugging your friends and family too much with asking them to buy something. Uh, but think about it this way. If you're recommending a restaurant to a friend, are you helping them out or are you bugging them? 
right? You're actually helping them with something. Um, number two, if no one wants to buy your products or services, well, great, it's, now it's time to learn, right? Why didn't, one, why didn't they want to buy? What things do they need help with right now, right? So you learn from the experience. Number three, I sold one USB microphone, but I cannot sell anymore. Um, you're probably too passive. So as an entrepreneur, you don't just build a site and wait for people to come inside. You have to actively go out and find customers, okay? So to recap, um, sorry, let me just quickly recap. Okay, six recap here, yeah? So validate your product. Don't spend uh, money on websites or ads yet until you actually be able to sell a few of your products or services. Then only go into building a site. Uh, be proactive. Entrepreneurs find solution and customers. Don't wait for it. Three, start to scale by building a site. You can use exercise for them. They are very affordable. Uh, I would definitely recommend that. Number four, give a bit stuff that helps solve problems for people, okay? And build an email list out of that. Then number five, you want to build a community out of your customers and followers. And number six, offer them out as referrals during your sales calls, yeah? You know, create a situation where your customers tell other customers about what you do. That's the best, all right? So thank you again. Uh, if you'd like to follow the journey for me, uh, selling this thing, using reaching out to people and also using some digital marketing tactics, um, well, just subscribe to that, the lead.io slash 1k, you'll be brought to that blog post where you can subscribe to it. And I will detail and document my whole 30 days prog progress with you. Following what I have to share with you today. All right. Okay, so I think it's time for Q&A. Let me go into some Q&A. Yes, here a question. Here's a question from Cash. So the question is, what if I don't have 1.5K students, social proof? All right, hope How I do I gain trust and yeah. confidence? You know, I overprepared and I used too much No, it's today. okay, it's okay. <clears throat> Here's a question. Okay, so Cash, huh? what if I don't have 1.5K students social proof? Oh, okay, thanks for clicking that button. How do I gain trust and confidence? All right, so <clears throat> now, if you don't have 1.5K students, right, social proof, you start from one student then, all right? You have to start from one. So yeah, it's going to be much harder to start as a total beginner with zero. Definitely, yeah, it's, 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 it's usual. More people are going to reject you, but you have to start with one. And one goes into two, two goes into four, you know, and then it goes up and up and up. So I would say start from small. It's okay to be rejected. Don't fear the rejection. Use it as a way to learn. Use it to get other referrals and to build up from there. Yeah. And speaking about, about trust, right? You talk about trust. Trust is an, amazing, an important thing in business. Now, trust is built over um, time and consistency, okay? Um, to give you a quick example, right? I have a YouTube channel, right? Um, which I've been on and off, on and off <laughs> uh, building, right? And what I realized, right? After like years and years of building this YouTube channel, right? Is that trust is built over time and consistency. It's not like you just appear one day and say, hey, you know, and then someone trusts you. It builds up over time, over a long, 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 long time. So you have to be consistent. So if you were to start a YouTube channel, right, I would recommend that you set a schedule. For example, I set a schedule to create one video bi-weekly. That's, that's me. Okay, that's me. So you have to do that consistently. And over time, that builds trust. So I hope that helps. Oh, Justin, we're going to go. Thank you for joining me, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so on, that's yeah. the only, yeah. Okay, so no more questions coming from the floor. Oh, and top 10 ideas? Recently, if you can rephrase mm -hmm. that, I, I, what, what? Yeah, maybe. Oh, out of content ideas. Uh, do you mean you're out of content ideas? Oh, um, you can access the video on Exabyte's uh, YouTube and also on their page. Let me yes. see if I'm able to find that for you.
All right, all right. This, this, if you're still here, right? I'm gonna show you some results now, you see? So, <laughs> there, 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 you see? People are already commenting, right? Right? <laughs> so people are gonna be commenting. People are gonna be uh, doing a poll. And what I'm gonna do next is just go reach out to these people and say, hey, you know, Andreas, uh, you did one in two on six. Are you considering doing it again, you know? And, and try to see if you can solve a problem that he's having. Just like that. Uh, Jamie, are you the Jamie I know? <laughs> Hi, Ruben. Why would you recommend books or websites for us to view as reference for SME services? Hmm. You mean you want to, you want to, like a, you want a, a directory? Do you mean yeah, directory? Now, if you mean a directory, uh, I wouldn't be able to recommend one because I don't actually use a directory to reach out to people. Hmm. But depends. it depends on who you're reaching for. So SMA businesses, well, you can go and look for, at some directories online, I guess. But I don't use them, so I wouldn't be able to recommend one for you. Um, but yeah. So anyway, to, to cash, you can we, we can access the video after this when Exabytes actually uploads it. Uh, I think they put it up to Exabytes TV here. Yeah, they put it up here. Let me just share this with you so you can actually check back out the recording for this video later on, yeah? Any upcoming value sharing, I think you can go and look out into Exabytes, the events. No problem, Cash. Here you go. There's a lot of events here. Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> so I have another one coming out on 28. Now, so... I know I have a lot of numbers in my in my titles like like one thousand monthly and also earn zero monthly. Blah, 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 blah. Now today's session is a bit more beginner, uh, more startup ish. Okay, gets you started. Now the the second session the following week is gonna be a bit more technical. We're gonna be going into a bit more of digital marketing and also going to the technique of doing that. Okay, so if you'd like to join me, um, twenty eighth December, same time. I'll see you next week. Okay. Yeah. All right, so maybe we take one more question before we go off today, yeah? Yeah, yeah just put in the, the feedback form so you yeah. help me as well. <laughs> um, is there any other questions that can help? Let's see. And of course, don't forget to subscribe here so I can share with you my updates and also tell you how this is going, whether I succeed or fail at selling this USC microphones, okay? This is exciting. So is there still any questions from the audience? If you would like to ask, you can ask now. Because Ruben is here and he's ready to answer your questions. All right, if there are no other questions, then I'll pass it back to, um, mm. oops, okay, I'll pass it back to uh, the to panelists. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much, Ruben. Thank you for your awesome sharing. Sini, are you there or Sami? Uh, I'm here, Sini here. Can you hear me? Can't click on the email subscription link. Uh, you mean this one here? You can't click on it. Uh. Okay, so just have to go here and ping. All right, maybe just do a quick refresh. You go and ping, and then you can just put in your email there. Okay. Boom. That's it. All right. All right. Okay. So I think we can we can uh, end the session here. Thank you so much for joining with us today. Oh, here's a question from Grayson. Got to add broker on maybe. Okay. All right. 
So I think we will end the, end the sessions for today. So thank you so much, Ruben. Thank you for joining with us today to share with us all the insightful information. And yeah, I hope to see you. Oh, we will see you in the next week. So if you guys are interested to, you know, learn more from Ruben, you guys can click in the link, which I will paste it again over here. Yeah, you guys can click in the link and register. All right. So next, next, next Tuesday will be another session from Ruben again. Um, here's another question from Jamie. Ruben, do you want to take this? Yeah, yeah, sure. In the chat. <clears throat> Oh, any websites or books that you would recommend for us to read to learn more about current business trends and get more inspiration? <laughs> That's a very wide, <laughs> broad question. Uh. Um, books, uh, business trends. Um, go, okay, go and read This is Marketing by Seth Godin. Uh. I think that's a good book to get started with. Yeah, that's a good book. Um, what else will I share with you? Uh, and alchemy. I don't have the book here. What is it called? Alchemy. Mm -hmm. Okay, by Rory. Yeah, it's a called alchemy. Let me just share with you this link. Rory. All right, those those are two books you can go through, and uh, I hope you have good fun reading those two books. Back to you, Sini. Okay, thank you.